Hello and welcome to my channel. Recently I was super busy with the cut drawings for my new project and thus I have nothing to build for today. So today's video is gonna be kind of theoretical. We're going to talk about three the most interesting robot arms of our planet. For me the best robot arm should be human-like robot arm. Because with our human arms we can do a lot of different stuff and like this with human-like robot arm we would be also able to do a lot of different stuff. So we are looking for the robot arm of the human size, the same structure and the same number of joints, the human arm has 7 degrees of freedom and it would be nice to have the robot arm which has the same dynamics as the human arm so we can throw the objects, we can do the high five and other cool stuff. And this is my list of the top 3 robot arms. LIMS2, low inertia manipulator with high stiffness and strength, blue robot and Halodi or Allodi. I don't know how to pronounce this, but this is actually the entire robot, but the robot arm from this entire robot is super interesting. Let's talk about them in details. And so the first is LIMS2, this one. So this is a robot and you see it has two arms, we are interested just in arm. And what is impressive is that this robot can do the high five, like this. I mean this is really cool. You can see that this robot is like super dynamic and super agile. So this is the schematics of this robot. And so uh, first of all you can see that this bulky part is the part which uh, accommodates all the motors inside. So basically there is three identical joints here. So this is one, this is the second one and this is the third one. So this is the three axis of the shoulder and afterwards the four other axis, they are here like this one is elbow axis and three axis in the wrist. So the four motors, one for elbow and three for the wrist, they are all over here. Like this, the moving part of this robot is very light, only 2.63 kilos. I think this is without counting the motors, but I'm not sure. And of course, this value is without end effector. This robot uses everywhere the brushless outrunners. And also, all the transmission is made with the cables. Only in the shoulder there is a planetary gearbox. So this robot is developed in this uh, university with uh, this company. And as I told you, this is low inertia manipulator with high stiffness and strength, LIMS2. Actually, they patented this robot arm. The main component of this robot arm is the reduction system made with the cables. So this robot arm use block and tackle technique in order to have the mechanical advantage in the elbow and also for the wrist. And also for the elbow, it uses the rolling joint. So it's basically moves like this. So this is the elbow. And as you can see, it's like super complicated. There is a lot of different pores. For wrist, it also uses the rolling joint. And so this is the shoulder. So here in the shoulder, you see there is a four motors for the elbow and wrist. And this is actuator, which they use for the shoulder. So in this actuator, this is the motor outrunner. This part, this is a planetary gearbox and this is a final reduction stage made with the cable. So this is a big poly, this is a small one and there is a cable between two of them. And they arrange these three identical actuators in this pattern with the three axes perpendicular to each other. So basically this arm has all the motors in the shoulder and all the reduction stages are in the joints. So there is a reduction stages with the cable in the elbow, in the wrist and so on. This robot arm is highly back drivable. Nevertheless, it has quite high gear ratio. So for example, in the shoulder, the gear total gear ratio, so the gear ratio of the planetary gearbox and of the, this uh, system with the cable is around 120. And gear ratio in the elbow is 88 and in the wrist is around 50. And by the way, this piece and this piece and also this one are 3D printed. So it's partially 3D printed robot arm. The payload of this robot is 3 kilograms. And I will show you another video which is very impressive. Here you see the robot with this arm is perfectly able to throw the objects. 
and this is really nice. And the name of the next robot arm is Blue, just Blue. This is a robot arm from the Berkeley and let's look at this arm. And first of all, you see that this almost entire arm is 3D printed. It's a highly back drivable arm. I have a picture over here and uh, so let's look closely. So this is the axis number one. So this is a base which have only one degree of freedom. And afterwards it has three identical modules. So one, two, three. So like this the construction is quite simple. There is one base and three identical modules. They also publish everything in this paper. And this paper, by the way, is publicly available. So first of all, you can see that they use quasi-direct drive. So they use the reduction ratio of a little bit more than seven. The payload of this arm is two kilogram and they expect to cost it less than 5,000. Let's look at one of these individual module. And they have the scheme of this module over here. And so you can see that they use a huge brushless outrunners, the outrunners with a large diameter. And afterwards, they use this belt transmission and differential over here. I suppose that they use differential with the bevel gears, with the 3D printed bevel gears. So this belt transmission has a reduction ratio of a little bit more than seven. And that's why they are using really small poly over here. And I think because of this small poly, they have several problems. First of all, from time to time, the belt skips on this poly. And the second, I'm pretty sure that their belt is overloaded, meaning that the belt works at the higher torque than it's supposed to. And this is because here this poly is super small and the belt not very large. But nevertheless, this robot arm works really nice. And also thanks to the high back drawability, they don't need to have the special torque sensors. They can just measure the current on each motor of the joint. And like this, they can estimate the torque on this joint. So here there is a link to this project. And now let's check another robot. And the third robot about which we're going to talk today is called Alodi or Halodi, I don't know. So let's look at it. Again, this is complete robot with two arms. And so you see that the arms quite bulky and uh, you see that they use cables. So this was differential with the cables. And also there is differential with the cables here and in elbow. Unfortunately, there is no much information about this robot. I did not find any publication, but on the website of this company, I found this. This is a picture of the robot arm without the skin. And so we can see a lot of stuff here. First of all, this robot arm is completely cable driven. It uses the differentials. It uses the differential in the wrist in the elbow and also differential in the shoulder. And it has quite interesting placement of the motors. So this is the motor of the axis number one. And this motor rotates this big pulley and you can even probably see the cable between them. Afterwards, so this is the shoulder. This is two motors which drives the differential in the shoulder. So this is the motor number two and motor number three. Afterwards, there is another differential in the elbow, but the motors which drive this differential are situated here in the shoulder. Motor number four and motor number five. And afterwards, for the differential in the wrist, the motors here in the elbow. So motor number six and motor number seven. So like this, they keep all the heavy motors close to the shoulder. And like this, this arm should be quite agile and dynamic. But unfortunately, there is no many information, so I cannot say how good is it. But using this another piece of documentation from their website, I found the specification. And here they put all the motors which they use. And afterwards, I looked at which kind of motors this company produce. And I figured out the motor torque at each joint. So for example, at here, they use the most powerful motor. This motor has the continuous torque of 10 Newton meters and peak torque of 40 Newton meters. In the shoulder, they use continuous torque of 5 Newton meter, peak torque 20 Newton meter. This is not the torque in the joint. This is the torque of the motor. So the same motor they use for the elbow and the smallest motor with the 1.7 Newton meter continuous torque they use for the wrist. Also from this document, I found that they use very low reduction ratio. Apparently in the entire arm, they use a reduction ratio from one 
to 4, not more than 4. But nevertheless, with this robot arm, they are capable to reach 8 kg payload, which is really, really a lot. I don't know how, but apparently this company, they were able to develop really powerful motors. Like here, look, the motor which has the continuous torque 10 Newton meters. This is like really a lot. But again, the problem with this robot and the problem with this company is that there is no much information. There is like super little information. The company claim that they have world's highest torque to weight motors. The most interesting information here is that they use cable driven transmission and they use a differential like a blue robot again in the wrist, elbow and shoulder. Like this, there is poly and cable. This, there is small poly and cable. And you can see also some cables over here. Here you can see the differential in the shoulder. And now I would like to make a small conclusion. So we analyzed these three robots, Blue LIMS2 and Allodi. And this is kind of similarity between them. First of all, they all use brushless motors. And in case of the Blue and Allodi, they use a huge outrunners. LIMS2 use outrunner, not super huge, but still outrunner. The reduction ratio is uh, very low in the blue and Allodi and relatively high for LIMS2. The motor position. They all try to put the motors close to the shoulder. So the blue robot has the motors in the shoulder and elbow. The LIMS2 is the best in this case. They put all the motors inside the shoulder. And Allodi has the motors in the shoulder and elbow. All of them, they have a super high back drivability. Blue and Allodi, they have a high back drivability, first of all, because they have a low reduction ratio. And LIMS2 have the high back drivability because they use the cables. And cable transmissions are quite often uh, really back drivable. The payload, blue has 2 kilos, LIMS2 has 3 kilos, and Allodi has the highest 8 kilos. The transmission. Blue Robot has the belt and gears. I think they are 3D printed gears. This is a bevel gears for the differential. LIMS2 mainly use the cables and they use a special system which is based on the block and tackle device. And Allodi use the cables and the differential made also with the cable. So, the Blue Robot. What's the good about it? I think the best thing about the Blue Robot is that it's simple. What's the worst thing about the blue robot? I think the worst thing is that the belt is overloaded. What about LIMS2? In my opinion, the best thing about this robot is that it's super fast and dynamic. And this is because all the motors in the shoulder and so the robot arm is very light. What's the negative about this robot arm? In my opinion, the negative thing is that it's super complicated. There is a lot of polys and uh, these cables which is coming all over the place. What about Halodi robot? I think the most interesting is that it's like super powerful. 8 kilos payload is really a lot. But what I don't like about it is that there is no much information. There is like super little information. I did not found any publication about this robot. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like this video and don't forget to put several comments. And also it would be nice if you would share this video in your social media. It is also possible to support my channel via PayPal or Patreon, all the links in the description to this video. And by the way, this is the names of the people who supported me on Patreon. Thanks to these people I was able to do this video and thanks to them I will continue with the building an affordable human-sized robot arm. Thank you, you are the best. Good luck with your projects and see you next time.